Good morning, everybody. How are you? Today we have a new lesson of how to write a story. Before we used to look at a picture and just describe it and write what you can see in it. But now, as grown-ups, you are going to imagine the whole story. How to imagine the whole story? You are going to be given a hint about what you should write about. Then, you are going to imagine how did you start your trip or your story? What happened in it in details? And how does it end? Here we have the meaning of a narrative story. What do we mean by narrative or to narrate something? Means to tell you, to tell you something. Like when your grandmas used to narrate some stories for you before going to bed. Narrative, a story or account of events or experiences, whether true or not. So, a narrative story may be a true story, something that really happened, and it may not be a real story, just some events that you imagined and wrote. Like all the stories that we read. Story elements. What do we mean by story elements? These are the parts that we are, must use in a story. They are the main parts of the story. The settings and the characters. What do we mean by settings? Settings are when and where, time and place. What do we mean by time and place? It means that you must start your story with the time that this story happened in. Love. Last summer. One day. One rainy day. One school day. So like that, I am giving some hints about the time that this story happened in. You may say last year, last month, it doesn't matter. Just remember that we start with this time because we are going to write all the events that happen in the story in the past tense. In the past tense. Because we are narrating the story or telling the story that has already happened to us. Next, the place. Okay, where did this story happen? In the forest, uh, at home, uh, wherever. Characters, who? What do I mean by who? The people who are participating in this story. For example, my family and I. My friends and I. 
If you don't want to be part of the story, you can write some names. Ben, Tom, and Sam, for example. Okay? Without you, with them, it's, it's not you may narrate a story about some people. Okay? And where are you going? My family and I were going on a camp. Trip in the spacious forest. What did we do? My family and I were going on a camping trip in the spacious forest. I mentioned who are the characters who are participating in the story. What were they going to do? And as you can see, I added the word spacious before the word forest because we must describe the things that we are going to pass by during our story. For example, if you met a strange animal or something, you must describe this animal for me. The place that you chose to camp in it, you must tell me how does it look like? Don't forget to describe each and everything you are telling us about in that story. Next, we have the plot. What's the plot? It's the main body of the story. It's the main body of the story. What do we mean by the body? It's the part of the details where you tell us what definitely happened in the strip. Since you opened your eyes excited to start your trip, what did you pack? How did you get ready? How did you prepare your things? Tell the way that you used to reach the place then describe me the place that you reached then tell me what happened to you what adventures have you faced then at the end finally how did you end your story it ended by fighting and killing these things okay and you finally when that home safe. Okay. I think you are going to have great ideas for that narrative story. Let's go to the next part. You were searching for it. You heard a story. 
strange sound. All these are problems that you can mention in the second paragraph and the end is the solution for this problem. How did you solve this problem? You fought, you killed the lion, you gave it your food, the meat that you had and you uh, stayed for a whole day starving. It's a solution also. Okay? Next. These are the parts that we were talking about in the beginning. Exposition, settings, characters and main idea. What were you going to do in that place? Middle, events and conflict, the problem that you were facing and the resolution which means how did you end your story okay, and how it gets solved, how did you solve this problem. The story aids or the helping parts of the story, the transitions. What do we mean by transitions? Words and phrases that provide a connection between ideas, sentences and paragraphs. It helps to make a piece of writing flow better. What do we mean by that? These are the linking, joining, connecting words, the transitions that we should use during writing our middle part of the story, we can start with once upon a time, as you can see this is at the beginning in the first paragraph, or one day, one school day, one summer day, as I told you. Then in the second paragraph, we are going to start with first, the first things that you have done, how did you get ready, how did you get prepared for that day, next, what happened, then, Suddenly, problem. You must remember. Suddenly, problem. When are you suddenly are going to spot the problem that we are going to face in this story? Soon, after a short time, later, after that, and finally, that we, we use in the third paragraph to start solving our problem. Again, using the transitions. First, at the beginning of the second paragraph. Okay. How did you get ready? How did you prepare yourself for uh, that uh, trip or for that adventure that you are going to do? Next, then suddenly outlet. When I use suddenly, I must spot the problem. Soon, later, these are all the uh, events of the problem. Soon what happened, later after that, and when we finish that, we are going to go to the third paragraph and try, finally, how did we solve our problem. Here, he is telling us the meaning of the word descriptive. Descriptive means to describe. As I told you, during your trip, you must keep describing the things that you are facing, the things that you use. The use of sensory details to paint a picture or clearly describe even places, objects, or events. As you know since junior one, that using adjectives is the 
flower is the main thing, is the seasoning that you put to your story to let the reader imagine what were you doing in details. If I told you I saw a flower, can you imagine this flower? No, you can't because I didn't describe it for you. But when I tell you I saw a long, beautiful, thin, red and green flower. Can you see the difference? Some adjectives let you draw the picture in your mind. This is what we want you to do. We want you to keep telling us details that we that makes us draw the picture in our minds. As for the descriptive story, for sure, as everything, we must have a title. The title is a brief of the story. A brief of the story, as we did while we were describing aliens or monsters. Okay, we said the scariest monster, the creepy alien, the title is the brief of the whole story. Characters, the people that are participating and how will we describe them in details, settings, when and where, time and place, and the plot which has got beginning, middle and ending. Now we are going to discuss some descriptive adjectives that may help you while writing your path. If we are describing a place, we can say about it, it's ancient. What do we mean by ancient? We mean very old. Okay? Next, boring or dull. It's not exciting at all. It's boring. Exciting and lively, this is the opposite of boring or dull. Enchanted means uh, like with a spell or a magician that's something to, to, to uh, enchant and to make it uh, to make it magical. A little bit magical, yes. Creepy, we know it from the descriptive. Strange and scary. Charming, it makes you feel wonderful. Charming, like Prince Charming, who, who uh, got married to Cinderella or Snow White. Prince Charming, something that makes you feel wonderful. Crowded, full of people, crowded, and the opposite of it, deserted, empty, no one in it, okay, crowded, full of people, deserted, empty, modern is the opposite of ancient, modern means new, spacious, large, space as a, as I told you about the forest. Interesting, incredible, something wonderful, magical, something that you feel that you are enchanted when you are looking at it. It's magical. Pleasant, pleasant, which is something that makes you feel happy. Mysterious, you don't know how to solve it. You need something special, one of a kind. Traditional, something that we are doing because old people were doing it before us. Something traditional. Expensive means it costs a lot of money and the opposite of it is cheap. It costs very low amount of money. Historic, something related to the history, like the pyramids, the sphinx, an old building that were built 200 years ago or something. This is historic. Polluted, not clean, like when the cars get uh, uh, 
smoke out of it, this pollutes the air around us. Let's go to the second column. People. To describe people, powerful means strong with power, brave, someone who is not afraid of anything, can face anything, opposite of brave, someone who is scared of anything even if it is a little thing, cheerful, someone who is happy and giving positive energy to everyone, shy and sensitive, someone who uh, doesn't want to talk to anybody, is shy, polite, someone who is polite, Helpful, helps everybody. Selfish, this is the opposite of helpful. Selfish, love, loves itself only. Intelligent or smart, someone who has got brilliant ideas. Patient, he can wait for things. Not, doesn't want everything to go that fast. Stubborn, rock-headed. You can't keep discussing anything with him. Friendly, can uh, talk with you in a friendly way. Optimistic, can see the good side of everything. Optimistic, can see the good side of everything. For example, if I lost my wallet, okay? Oh, thanks God, no problem. As long as we are all safe, no problem that the wallet uh, was lost. But if you are pessimistic, you see the bad side of everything. Oh, I lost my wallet. This is the end of the world. And you can see the negative part of everything. To be honest, the hell is silent. Honest means to keep saying the truth all the time. You are honest. Vain, to be vain means to uh, be uh, rude with people, vain, dealing in a bad way. Generous, you don't think about keeping and saving money only. Kind-hearted, someone who loves everybody and does good things to make them happy. Someone who is bad at dealing with people, elegant or sheep, way in a good way, muscular with strong muscles. Let's go to the next column. Creatures. Creatures like the ones that you we used to describe. If you met a creature in a, a in the park or in the forest or in a place that you were visiting, a deserted house or something. These creatures, we can describe them by like being wild or fierce. They have the same meaning. Fierce or wild, like the lions and tigers. The opposite of them, that they are tame, like the dogs and the cats that you can keep at home. Hairy, covered in hair. Giant, extremely huge, spiky with the spikes coming out, furry with fur like the cats or the bears, poisonous, getting poisoned like the snakes or uh, the scorpions, scaly with scales over it like the fish, spotty, dots for it, stripy, lines. Okay, spotty, dots, stripy, lines. Okay, thick, like when we descri describe the eyeballs, they are thick or thin, they are the opposite of each other. Bushy, with hair coming out of it. 
Okay, bushy, like the people who has bushy eyebrows. The hair is getting out because we are describing a creature. Pointed with a short ending point. Slimy, like a slime. Ferocious means very, very wild. Something ferocious, very dangerous, extinct, not alive any more, like dinosaurs, cold blooded, like uh, the zombies, you know the zombies, they are cold blooded because they are dead and they uh, woke up again, so they are cold blooded, their blood is cold. Aquatic, related to water, any creature that is related to water, we can describe it by being aquatic. Domestic, like the pets, they are tame and domestic. Scary means it can frighten you out. Then also, weather. To describe the weather, we can say rainy, stormy, windy. Rainy, stormy, thunder, lightning, windy, strong air, snowy, snow is coming down from the sky, freezing, extremely cool, cloudy, with clouds of air, foggy, with the white air that makes it difficult for you to see in front of you well, misty means foggy with a little bit uh, drops of water uh, covering everything, damp and wet, they have the same meaning, and the opposite of them is dry, damp, wet, and the opposite of it is dry, hot and sunny, they have the same meaning when the sun is shining uh, brightly, it, we feel hot, warm, not cold and not hot, pleasant with a nice wind or breeze uh, uh, coming uh, like breezy. Breezy also means you feel a little wind, like when you sit on the beach or on the seashore to feel the breeze. Terrible, very bad weather. Chilly, a little bit cold. Sizzling, very, very hot. Smoggy, like smoke and fog, you can't see because you can see fog and smoke. Windless means the weather is very dry and there is no air at all around us. These are some descriptions for people. Okay, this is a story that when you read it, you will find all the steps that we have covered. We will find a beginning, a middle, an ending, beginning with all the settings that we have, okay, time, place, people, and what were they doing first, and they started, how did the story start, and then the middle are the details of the story, and down there we are going find the solution of the problem. Okay? Here we are going to read a, a story that we are going to add to it its ending. Read the story, fill in the blanks, write a suitable ending. We are going to add to it the ending part. As you can see the title is empty, we must add a title, but let's read the story first to know which title is suitable for it. But as for your own story, you are going to have the details in your mind, so it's easy to start with the title. But now we are going to read the title till the end, till we see what is the story talking about. 
my mom knocked on my bedroom door and said, Marcus, it's time for you to get up. I looked at the clock on my dressing table. It was six in the morning. And I was very grumpy. I stayed up late writing the book report last night and I did not go to sleep until midnight. Here at the beginning, as you know, we must add the timing of this story. So, we can add one day then a comma. Don't forget the comma, it's very important. If you wrote one sunny day, one windy day, one school day, whatever, it's the same thing. Okay? We are just giving you some ideas. At the beginning of the second paragraph, as I told you before, we are going to start with the linking word. that happens. And then a comma after it, don't forget. First, I got out of my bed and took a quick shower. As you can see, this is the preparation stage. How did he get ready to start the day? I got out of my bed and took a quick shower. Yes. Next.
So now, as you can see, the problem was Marcus found 20 cars in the street and when he went on his bus, he found out that his friend James lost his 20 pounds. He wants us here to complete the story and draw it the ending. Okay? Let's see. What do you think would Marcus do after hearing this piece of information from his friend James? That his friend James has already lost 20 pounds. We can start with after that come on Marcus got puzzled what do you mean by puzzled? confused doesn't know what to do For a while, for some time, the puzzle for a while. He thought about the 20 pounds he thought about the 20 pounds he found Look what we're reading here. Quotation marks. They must be his. Marcus said to himself and he thought you know when you hear something you keep talking to yourself in your mind they must be his okay we are going to leave a space for the third paragraph and write finally to end up the story Finally, Marcus got the 20 pounds out of his pocket. He got 20 pounds out of his pocket and gave it to James. Okay, so he thought and then he gave it to his friend James. Open quotation marks, I think. This is yours.
James, here we are going to say, how did James feel? Don't act of joy and set comma fish words and you mark us. My day. We can now buy the ball and play together. Okay, we can now ball the ball and play together. Marcus felt happy and sad. Be honest to stay happy. This is what Marcus has learned from the situation that happened to him. He said, be honest means to stay honest with yourself and with people to stay happy. I wish you got it. See you next time. Thank you.